Hi there, I'm John of John's Carnivorous Plants. This is my indoor nursery and today we're going to talk about what to do whenever you go on vacation with your plants. Well, actually what you do for your plants whenever you go on vacation, not to bring your plants up. Yeah, okay. So uh, there are many different ways of accomplishing this, but my first suggestion is definitely number one, the flood method. So most of us keep our carnivorous plants in a tray, saucer, etc. I've seen people go to an extreme length to where they'll like set up a light over top their bathtub and then like literally fill up to where it's like almost right even with the uh, pot and then leave for like a week or two, come back, be successful. I personally will flood out my collection if I'm leaving for a week and like I mean like when I mean flood all of the trays are entirely full even if they were previously like half full or whatever just make sure everything's all the way topped off etc. You generally can get away if like you're uh, using a 1020 tray like this or like you know you have a deep enough uh, you know saucer or something you can get away with uh, you know about a week away over flooding the plant. Now whatever you get beyond that that's where you start getting into some weirder territory. If you have just a few plants you can situate a two liter bottle upside down and put the uh, opening down in the water of the tray so as the water evaporates more water will pull out of the bottle that's one method I haven't personally done that but if I was to you know do it over again with a smaller setup that's definitely something I would look into because I feel like people don't really think that one is a very good method and it's actually very simple very easy most of us have two liter bottles or like a milk jug or something that you can flip upside down and it's a cool little party science trick that i think people forget after like you know the fourth fifth grade but it's still really cool and uh helps out with the plants a lot especially if you go on a vacation it gives you an extra gallon of water like you know hanging in the air over top of your plants but it also leads to like you know there's an element of failure of like it can get tipped over if you have pets or whatnot so it, it's not as a good uh, thing. Automated watering systems work. And then one of the biggest things I've seen is you can get wicks that like you like put into the pot either the top or the bottom. There's somebody in uh, the carnivorous plant discord who grows using these wicks and will leave for like a week or two at a time. No problem. Just fills up a reservoir, has the, the wicks ran into it and the plants uh, stay nice and moist and happy all throughout. Now, that's, uh, it, that is an option. I've never used it myself. However, uh, I could see some issues like having some bacteria or whatever start forming over time if you just consistently use them. But eh, I've never done it, so I don't know. But I thought I'd at least throw that out there for you. And then last but not least, anytime you go on vacation, make sure your setup is not going to have huge temperature swings. So make sure the air conditioner's on if it's still in the summer. Make sure heat's still on if it's in the winter. Because uh, just because you're not home and you leave your plants there, yeah, you, you swing the temperature 10, 15 degrees, you'll end up with either toasted or frozen plants. And they're not going to like that too much. Now, this was a pretty short, sweet video. There wasn't really much for me to add to this matter just because it's like it's either flood them out, have a wick, or... You know, some kind of jug system or something, or automatic system to keep them uh, well watered. The temperature thing is a little bit trickier, especially if like you're a newer grower. People eventually, like higher higher end setups like this, you eventually get to a point where you'll have controllers and stuff to where like your Wi-Fi, you know, you'll have Wi-Fi capability to where you can see the temperature whenever or wherever you're at in the world. So that can help out a little bit, but. For someone just starting, it's kind of one of those things. You just got to try to keep things the normal as normal as possible. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you on the next one. Goodbye.